fundamentally, when these models are asked, for example, once upon a time, it doesn't actually just generate the comma. It actually has uh, uh, about 100,000 words that it could pick from, comma, there, whatever else, and it ranks them. It ranks them to be the most likely word and then the most unlikely word. Um, and there's a whole spectrum. So for example, comma is the most likely word, according to this model, um, that goes after once upon a time. There is the second most likely, once upon a time in is the third most likely. And then somewhere far down, like 100,000th number is like zebra, or you know, like bananas, or whatever. Once upon a time bananas. I guess it makes sense. Once upon a time exclamation mark even makes less sense, right? So, so, so I, I created this visualization to be able to show you that these models aren't actually picking the, um, but generally speaking, they will pick the very first one always. So if you, if, you get, if you ask, for example, the question once upon a time, or, or to complete this, it'll always give you the same story. This is very important to highlight, actually. These models have only one best word that they think when they are trained is going to be the next likely. So while you may have asked ChatGPT the same question and gotten different results, that's because there's some uh, processing, manipulation, extra effort happening on top of it that's allowing us to get multiple answers. But fundamentally, given the same prompt, the model will always generate the same specific sequence of characters. So that's, that's because it's always picking the first option. right? It's picking comma, it's picking there was a little girl. As you saw, it's the same answer. It's just picking it. At each given point, it had other options to pick from. So if I go back and uh, I say once upon a time, comma, or I actually want to say once upon a time, there. There was, or there were. There were two, or there were three. It could have picked either. There were two seems very likely, but it could also pick the three if I said, don't always pick the obvious answer. Go somewhere around the obvious answers. So there were two. There were two brothers, sisters. There were three. Three brothers, three little. Three little sounds actually kind of more fun than three brothers and three sisters, so it's got add three, right? Three little, three little pigs, three little girls, three little bears. And so it just, it, all it's doing is just making up the most grammatically coherent uh, next word. This is a very important highlight that these models, fundamentally, internally, uh, think, same thing that's driving ChatGPT, is not thinking. It's not thinking of the best answer, it's not thinking of the most creative story or whatever. It's just trying to make the keep the sentence grammatically grammatic, grammatically coherent, so that it actually just makes somehow grammatical sense. And so, if you try and deviate it, it actually will get confused. Did you have a question, please? Yeah, I do. Um, if, if when it picks words or the next construct to use, is it doing so based on a set of like um, uh, there's a psychologist uh, named Noam Chomsky who's familiar to some people. He, he talks about internal cognitive structures that are sort of pre-wired in humans. Is this doing something similar to that? It has a set of rules that it uses, mm -hmm. and then it constructs the sentence based on that? Or is it just purely predictive based on its experience of, you know, consuming a trillion different mm -hmm. possibilities? That's a really, a really good question. So to repeat the question uh, you're asking about, so first of all, if you're familiar with Noam Chomsky, who, he's a linguist, like a very a prolific, contributor to the field of NLP, uh, natural language processing, uh, especially before Transformers, the sort of newest way of doing things, just throwing lots of data, compressing. Before that, his sort of, uh, and his peers' uh, research efforts were a lot more interesting because they were all rule-based, as you mentioned. So your question is, uh, uh, when, I'm, when, when the story starts getting generated, once upon a time, uh, there was, is it saying, uh, there was is because of the language patterns that humans generally speak, that uh, Chomsky and so on uh, mapped out, um, and so it's speaking based on that intelligent uh, sort of thought, or is it just doing it based on the fact that it saw 15 trillion times that once upon a time was followed by there, and so it's just doing that. It's the latter. It, it is, there is no thinking going on, there is no rules. In this specific uh, model especially, uh, these, call, these things called neural networks, it is just doing a predictive model based on uh, just the frequency that it saw it as. Now, the important thing to know is that it didn't just see once upon a time there, it saw a massive paragraph and then followed by once upon a time there. It, it saw all kinds of stuff. So if I, if I have once upon a time like this, it might be there, but maybe if I say once comma, it might not say once upon a time or upon is, so yeah, once is not followed by upon if the comma is there. So it's a once when the world. So, so it, it very much is just based on the the data that it saw. This is an extremely important uh, point, so I appreciate the question. Um, and so, um, for example, in a land far, far away, there lived two princess. 
So something I wanted to sort of highlight as well is uh, you see how um, you may have heard the word token um, in relation to um, uh, language models, and you may wonder like what's tokens, what's words, what are the things priced differently, blah blah blah. Um, I mean, not blah, 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 it's interesting enough to me. Um, but uh, it's because tokens uh, are a way of splitting up words so that we don't have to deal with like millions of words because there are lots of words, especially variations, right? Like uh, with ing and es and all the like, just variations of words, you know, highly, high, um, et cetera. And so uh, if you see the one in Land Far, Far Away, there lived two. Um, the suggestions it has, the best ones, are two sisters, two brothers, and two princess. Two princess doesn't really make sense because it's a singular. It should be two princesses, right? But it's because princess was not a common enough word in the, let's say, the, you know, in the top 100,000, which is kind of the vocabulary of this model, 128,000. Um, then it said, you know what, I'm going to split princess up into princess and, or princesses up into princess and ES for optimization purposes, just so that we only have to ever deal with 100,000-ish uh, number of words. So if I do say two sisters, it'll say something else. Two brothers, it'll say whatever. But if I say two princess, it'll say ES, because it knows that it's supposed to follow by ES to finish the actual grammatically correct uh, se uh, sequence, right? Two princesses. So, as so, so if, you, if you heard the word token and words and you're confused about where that belong, princess is, uh, sorry, a token is simply a word split up to be just optimal for speed and training purposes and just m various other reasons that would be pointless to go into because there's more fun stuff to cover. Um, in this in this uh, demo, also I want I created this to be able to show you uh, a few different aspects of it. One is um, that so like I said, it just completes the next word just based on grammatical cohesion, and so it's not really thinking. The other is that it's really very much bound by what you've given it to work with. So if I say uh, I'm here in uh, I don't know what's uh, what's that. Yes, I'm here at the VPL. I'm here at the VPL um, in. Maybe it knows that VPL is in Vancouver. Uh, okay, San. I wonder. I, okay, well, San, maybe there's a VPL in San Francisco, huh? <laughs> but but let's say in Vancouver. In Vancouver, I should say Canada after this probably. Vancouver, BC. So because I gave it Vancouver, it knew that BC is probably going to be after this because Vancouver, comma is generally followed by BC. Um, two, talk. Or let's just say uh, it's you know it's uh, July 27th I believe it's the 27th um, and VPL is hosting a lecture on obviously it does it shouldn't know because the lecture was just decided and the model was trained later but do you think it's going to be like I don't know no it's just going to try and finish the sentence what's grammatically sen sensible so it's going to say on the history of the Vancouver Public Library. That's that's pretty pretty funny, sort of easy answer. Um, VPL lecture about our Vancouver Art Gallery, Vancouver Art Museum. So it's just coming up with uh, cohesive. You know, the lecture is free and starts like that. But it's true. Started two two fifteen fifty p.m. So it's just making stuff up, right? Um, because it's just trying to keep the sentence going, keep the conversation going. So it's located at three fifty West Georgia. That part is it. It knows because the data has seen that VPL's location is that. Um, but it, it hopefully gives you some sense that it is just trying to complete sentences. So the reason why ChatGPT lies, quote unquote, is because it, it doesn't know to stop. The goal of the model, the training process, was to always generate the next token. There was no goal given during that training process that if you don't know, don't answer. Uh, that there is parts, there is ways to do that, which is likely, and I'll talk about that later. But fundamentally, if you give it context, for example, uh, let's say. Uh, you know, VPL manifest uh, lecture, you know, 2 p.m. lecture about agriculture, let's just say. And then uh, I'm going to say, so uh, today at 2, there's going to be a lecture about agriculture, right? So just because I said it just moments ago in that sentence, it's going to go ahead and assume that that's the case, right? So and there's an application of this called retrieval augmented generation and so on, and I'll talk about that later. But fundamentally, that's how easy it is to just bias to give it an answer, give an answer that you wanted to give. Just give it information, give it context about the world that you've created for it, and it'll just follow that into creating a story. So, so 